Today, feathers on the gel plate. Welcome back friends. So I tried feathers one other time, I don't know, a couple of years ago, and I had the wrong kind of feathers. They were more like a flat feather. They didn't have like individual little, like I love the way this has these little fine little feathers off of the spine. So it just makes for a more interesting print, I think. So I bought, I think these are ostrich feathers and um, they're obviously maybe dyed or something I don't know and these are peacock obviously they're not very big they fit nicely on an 8x10 plate anyway I had a lot of fun so let's take a look okay so welcome back friends today we're going to play with some feathers and printing I think the paint will also stick to the feathers but the, these don't have these are um, peacock obviously and they are very fine down here so but I, I think it's going to make great stuff on the plate this one might actually pick up the paint and look kind of cool so we'll see i'm going to start with the peacock and i'm going to um let me, let me tape my i don't like how this moves around but i do like the white paper underneath so let's get some tape Let us just experiment a little bit. So I'm going to pick this one up with um, deli paper just to get the background. Ooh, that might be very interesting. So I like the thinness of the deli paper that you really could get fine details. I can get really close to the spine. And then I end up with a, also a beautiful transparent. Uh, look at that nice detail. Okay, and look at this gorgeous transparent paper that we have. This might this might end up being a really good favorite of mine. Let's see. I love this. This could get really messy, I think, because the paint is on the. It is on the uh, feathers. So let's see. Um, this is this is much more beautiful than I thought it was going to be. I love what was happening right here. I think I left this one on too long, but um, yeah, I, I absolutely love it. So this will be dry in like about a minute, probably, and I'm just going to pick it up with maybe um, a combo of these two colors unless I get to start with. That's what we're going to do. I'm not going to get too creative in the very beginning. We're just going to do straightforward feathers and then we'll we'll branch out from there. All right, so I'm choosing these colors because they're kind of transparent. This one's a quinacridone red and cadmium yellow and white. Actually, it might have enough white in it that it's not so transparent. This one is very, this is Indian yellow. It's very transparent. And I'm on my 8x10 plate today. And I'm going to pick this up with rice paper.
Now this is very, this is Nova paints. It's very, Nova color paints, very um, quick drying paint, even faster drying than golden fluid in my opinion. But I still, anywhere from one minute to two minutes, depending on your paint. Let's just see. Now I lost a little bit right here. The paper stuck. I think there was a feather that stuck there or something. So I did lose a little bit right there, but this will be very beautiful in collage. So let's, um, let's just keep going and play with different colors. Okay, so from here on, we're gonna speed it up just a little bit. I'm starting with some Payne's Gray. Um, we got a little bit of the yellow from my brayer still mixing in, but that'll make the color even nicer. And we're going to put down our feathers. And again, we're going to go for the deli paper. Because I just, I want to have lots of these deli papers. I think they're so beautiful. And with deli paper, you don't have to wait for the paint to dry. It just it usually picks up really well. And if you don't wait, then you leave a good imprint and your, your ghost that's left behind is still very workable and doable. Like, see how nice and dark that is? That isn't always the case, but that's what we strive for. So I'm gonna pick this up with some quinacridone red. And uh, as you can see, I'm really down to the bottle, the bottom of the bottle. I'm mixing it with um, an Indian yellow. Both of these paints are very transparent. They mix well. They make all sorts of shades of orange in there. It, it, it's beautiful when you mix them on the plate. Again, I'm picking up with some deli paper. I'm not deli paper, rice paper, excuse me. And I waited about a minute, I cut some of that out so you wouldn't be bored. But anyway, you see we have all kinds of shades of Indian yellow, orange, and the quinacridone red. It's gonna make a beautiful collage paper. So this is Jenkins Green. It's also very transparent as you can see. And now we're using this other feather. I think this is an ostrich. Feather. I got these on Amazon. I will put the links in the description below. And this kind of gave me the idea of maybe using it, maybe using the feathers as a mask. And of course we left some feathers behind, so I'm being careful to pick them off. And we're going to pick this up with an Indian yellow. I think the Jenkin, Jenkins green and the Indian yellow is a pretty color combination. So this is a very simple print. And again, I waited like one to two minutes. Nova color paints, super dry. They dry fast, 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 fast. So it's like about a minute and a half. And notice my plate is coming up clean on almost every pull. So that paint is a mixture of quinacridone, red, cadmium yellow, and some white. I'm just adding a little bit more white to it to give me this really pretty color. And I'm gonna just make a background here. We're trying a different technique on this one. So I'm going to tape it down on the left hand side so that it's registered, meaning that the paper will come down in the same spot every single time. I like that it's a beautiful color, but it's an uneven color. So now we're gonna go for this quinacridone red again, if I can get enough out of the bottle. And 
And this time we're going to use a stencil. I will also link to the stencil below. It's, it's one of my most recent stencils that I did. It's a, this particular one is a really good seller. And the reason why I'm making this paper is because then I want to use the feathers as a mask. But first I have to clean the plate, so I'm going to pick up most of this with the deli paper. Don't want to waste anything. And it doesn't all come off, but I can, I can clean that up with a um, baby wipe. So now that my plate is clean again, now we're going to play with the mask. So I'm putting down some Payne's Gray. So I'm not as happy with the ostrich feathers as I was with the peacock. I mean, they, they're good for masking, but they don't leave a really good imprint on the plate to pick up, at least not as, not as well as the um, peacock feathers do. I mean, it makes a nice mask though. Yeah, so there's, there's areas of this that I like. But see how faint that top one is? It's just, and even the bottom one, the, the feathers that are coming out are not very, very defined just around where the spine of the feather was. So, you know, it's a little disappointing. So maybe after the feathers are a little bit more caked with paint, we'll get some more interesting shapes. Right now I'm trying to use it as a, almost like a stamp. I'm, I'm laying it down on top of the wet paint and I'm trying to lift some off. I don't know if that's working or not, but at this stage, we're just trying different things. Okay, so now I'm still trying to get more paint out of this jar or this bottle. Obviously, there's enough pain in there. I'm, I'm managing to get some out. And again, I decide I'm going to try to use the peacock feathers as a stamp. I don't think that's going to work, though. It's very, very faint. Okay, so now I'm picking up with some titanium white. So it seems to be mixing with the quinacridone red, so I'm getting more of a pink. And we'll see how much we actually see. I think this print is just going to be a little bit dark. Oh, so what I'm demonstrating right there is that particular brayer. The bad thing about it is no matter what position, even if you turn it over, it still sticks to the paper. The, the brayer itself actually sticks to your paper. So it's, it's not very good. Anyway. I have two of them. I, I'm, I've got to get some more speedball prayers. Anyway, that print-off sheet that I had over there was pretty nice, so I'm saving that. And this is a little bit of a grungy example. I still love that, that piece right there. I've, I'm probably going to use that. So, you know, never fear. Sometimes even when things don't look like they're going to work out, they work out. I'm going to try to print 
on top of that brayer sheet because I loved it so much. So I'm just going to put some Payne's Gray down the center. And I'm using a peacock feather. I'm going to pick up with the um, deli paper. But I want, and of course, this time I didn't get a clean pickup. So I'm using a second sheet to get those additional. Now we got a nice dark ghost, and we're going right over that brayer sheet. Now, of course, this is copy paper, and I might not want to use it in collage, but I just wanted to see what would happen if I did this. I don't want to use rice paper as my brayer, you know, my brayer cleanup sheets. So I just use cheap copy paper, but sometimes I get really good results there. And oh, look at that. It's like beautiful. So I don't know. I'll do something with it. And I have a little bit of a very pale ghost there, so I'm just going to leave it. Maybe it'll add something special to the next print. And that's quinacridone red again. I'm picking up with Deli. Sometimes when you rub too hard, you then get a lousy ghost. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, see how on the bottom, I think I rub too much. And even, even the top, there's some areas that are just too light. But like I said with that previous print, there still might be something that comes of this that I might end up really loving. So I'm going to lay down some Titan Green Pale. And I'm going to try to add some texture. Now, I really made a poor choice with this cardboard. It, it was not giving me the kind of marks that I wanted. So then I pulled out one that has like a a little bit of a floral, leafy pattern. So now I'm pulling out my manganese blue. And I'm going to see if I can maybe see the blue through those areas that are created with the cardboard and the and the leaves see if it adds anything to that weak ghost that we had then I also tried to brayer off some of this stuff I made it just grungier that's all it did the paint was starting to dry so it started to lift it anyway we'll see what happens I'm waiting for the paint to dry to make sure that it doesn't, that the, I don't want the Titan Green Pale to mix too much with the Manganese Blue. This blue is fairly like dark, but transparent. So, um, and I, I don't usually use it as a pickup paint. So we'll see what happens. I usually try to use a more opaque paint to do the final pickup. I just find that they pick up better than the transparent colors. So I waited about two minutes before I pull because this is golden paint. Now this is not Nova color and it's okay. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Some parts of it didn't work like in the upper right hand corner didn't pick up. I won't use that again. So now we have some grunge on the plate, but I'm just going to leave it. And this time we're going to start with the manganese blue. It is one of my favorite colors. Yeah, 
The ostrich feathers just don't work as well as the peacock. But I have a really pretty um, jelly paper. And so we're seeing now, should we use this ghost or not? So I decided no, and I just cleaned the plate. <laughs> I think this is a different color blue. But it's also a dark blue. And I went back to my peacock feathers, which I think are much prettier and give me a better result. But they do leave some feathers on the plate. You have to be really careful to make sure you get them all off. Thinking about what color I should pick this up with or what I should do next. So this is a, a yellow green Nova color. You'll notice that most of the time when I'm using, if I'm actually using a green paint, it's a bright green. Um, other than that, I make green on the plate with a mixture of yellow and blue. Okay, here's the, the, my favorite cardboard thing that actually has good texture to it. And now I'm going to have to pick up with another color. So I'm just letting it dry a tiny bit before I add some yellow. And I think this was the cadmium yellow. It's in the jar and I'm spooning it out. So if you're wondering, this is still the Art Advantage paper. I still had some. So that day, that's what I was using. Because I know we all, we're all trying to find the perfect rice paper. But everybody's different. Everybody's technique is a little bit different. You have to do what's right for you, but this is the paper that I love that you can't get right now. So you do see a little bit of that yellow. So I'm pretty happy with this. And I love that grunge that I got along the edge. Ooh, love it. Oh, and that was, um, that was the Nova color. The blue was a um, ultramarine. So now I'm switching to black. I decided that I really wanted to have some black papers, deli papers, with the um, peacock feathers. So I wanted to make sure I at least did that. I'm laying down a second sheet just to get a cleaner background. So somehow I was not recording, but I was using the um, golden quinacridone red and some orange on the left side. And now I'm, I'm letting that dry after I used cardboard and I'm going to pick that up with the cadmium yellow from Nova Color. I think with all that texture, it'll be nice because it was a weak ghost, very weak. So now it's dry. I'm going to spoon out some yellow. Cadmium yellow is a beautiful yellow. I haven't used it in years, so I thought, let me get some. Okay, so now we are going to pick up, and I'm going to leave this for a little bit longer, like maybe three minutes. 
I just use my intuition on the timing, you know, and I also use like my hand for the, to test for coolness to decide whether or not it's time to pull. But because I left it a little bit longer, um, some, of, some of the paper is starting to stick along the edges. So I'm pulling from the other side. This is why I usually don't leave it too long because the paper could stay on the plate, want to stay on the plate. Anyway, it's a little busy, but the color combination is nice and there are areas that I will like for collage. And now I've got some, finally got some grunge on the plate, but as you can see, I did pick up a lot of that grunge on this print. Okay, here's our overview. Gotta love the good deli paper, but that left me a beautiful ghost. I love that print. Another deli paper. I end up using this one. I've already used it. <laughs> that also made a really nice print. This was a nice deli paper as a mask, but I, I'm not that, I wasn't wild about it, so I didn't make the print. Or yes, I did. Okay, on this one I'm wrong. I made the print. But then I got the idea to use it as a mask. So, pulled out a stencil and gave it a try. And I think it was the right stencil for that particular feather. And this one is beautiful. It has a really, that section right there is absolutely beautiful and then I thought I would just overprint a um, peacock feather and again we have a nice ghost and a kind of I don't know I, I ha I'm on the fence with that one another another deli paper I like what happens when the feather starts to get caked with paint but anyway, the peacock feathers are the winner. I think this is my favorite print right here, the yellow, yellow and green one with the um, ultramarine blue. This is a beautiful deli paper in that color blue. And, you know, I could just use the, the str strands part, you know? And I had to have this in black. Absolutely had to have it. And then that made a decent print. But my favorite one is still the, the yellow and green one. So thanks for watching. I know not all of my prints were magnificent or anything. This was the first time doing it. I think the next time my prints will be better because now I know what to do and what not to do. But this was, um, you know, an experiment as most of my videos are experiments. Ex as most of my videos are experiments. We have to experiment to push our work forward. You don't, you don't just like learn something through a video and then instantly know how to do it, right? I'm sure you've all experienced this. It takes a while. You have to make a lot of prints before you can say, yeah, I know how to do this. And even then, you still have some duds. It happens. Anyway, so don't get frustrated, just keep printing. And again, thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching, and don't forget to create, inspire, and share. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.